All right, I guess I will kick it off. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're excited to have you participate in our section, uh, our, our session. What we'd like to do is we'd like to have a panel and we'd like to discuss Red Hat Builds and also Fedora. The session in this title is really focused on how can we revamp our community outreach and how can we really transform the way that we think about diversity, equity, and conclusion, inclusion here. Um, so we have quite a full slate of panelists that and a, and a few questions, but we want to make sure that at the end we leave time for Q&A. So before we jump in, Marie, I'd like to just do a quick round of introductions of the panelists. So just to give them some space to introduce their name, just in case people are not familiar with the panelists. Sure. Do you want to go ahead? Sure. Hi, my name is Ron Brown. I work at Red Hat. I am the co-chair of Build Campus University Outreach, and I'm also working in the IT space as a, a, a facilitation, uh, a, a cattle slap uh, facilitator. I will go ahead since my name is on this first screen. Um, so my name is Kim Lee. I am also the co-lead with um, Build Campus University Outreach Committee. Um, my day job is a senior principal um, business system analyst within our enterprise data analytics team under uh, within IT. I'll go next. Uh, I am Matthew Miller. I am the Fedora project leader. I assume most people people know this already. Uh, this is really important to me because the thing that is important about Fedora Linux is that it's an operating system that we collectively are building for ourselves. It's something that we own and it belongs to all of us. And that it belongs to all of us can't be really true unless it actually does belong to all of us. We need it to be for all people uh, of all races, genders, sexualities, everywhere in the world. Like this needs to be something that in order to really live up to the potential of free and open source software, we need to be inclusive in a radical way that we have not always been before. So this is super important to me. Thanks, Matthew. Hi, I am Marie Norton. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've also been involved as a contributor to Fedora since 2013, working on graphic design and a variety of things. I am going to pass it off to Alexandra. So I'm Alexandra Fedorova, and I'm currently elected Fedora Council member. I work on CI and testing and automation of those things in uh, Red Hat and in Fedora as well. And I've also been uh, for 10 years the Russian Fedora ambassador. So I kind of bring the perspective of the non-English speaking uh, side of the community sometimes to the conversations around Fedora. Mariana, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Mariana. Uh, as my day job, I am a product owner for PHPList, which is an open source email marketing product. On my free time, I enjoy contributing to open source communities, and one of them is a Fedora project. Uh, currently, I am a council member and a co-lead in one of Fedora's objectives. So people? And I can take the last, I guess, yeah. Uh, I work in community platform engineering. Uh, I work on infrastructure in Fedora and CentOS side. That's my day job. Uh, I'm diversity and inclusion advisor to Fedora Council, and I also am I'm in Mindshare for mentored project things. And apart from that, you can see me in Fedora Join and other general places. All right, excellent. So uh, thank you for those introductions. Let's go to the next slide. I believe Kimla is going to, um, I know I think I will start us all really trying to ground us in the goal of the session. Really, we want to talk about some of the experience of, of doing diversity, equity, inclusion work. Uh, Kim and I will be speaking from the perspective of working at Red Hat and working in uh, BUILD, which stands for Blacks United in Leadership and Diversity, in our campus and university outreach programs. And then uh, the other panelists will speak about their experiences of doing the work and engaging in the work from the Fedora perspective. And we really want to have this panel to combine to also invite you all in to talk about um, some best practices and experiences that you all have uh, of doing community outreach and just share lessons learned. 
So I'll start off with a brief overview of Red Hats. And, you know, you're probably already familiar with many of uh, most of this, but I do want to kind of ground this in terms of, you know, our company started off as an open source company delivering the Rel uh, operating system. And we've expanded since then into, uh, uh, in terms of our organization, our, our open culture, and also explain, ex expanding into delivering the, the cloud. So next slide, please. So it's, it's been more than 25 years. Really, as I said before, we started with that, that single operating system, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then, you know, we've expanded into that broad portfolio of the hybrid cloud infrastructure, middleware containers. And uh, we're excited to be a part of Red Hat. We're excited to extend that culture of the open organization and also um, spread the knowledge of open source. So, Kimla. Hi. Um, so, Jess, I think we already said what was built in the chat, but just for the ones that don't know, Bill stands for Blacks um, United in Leadership and Diversity. Uh, we started this group, and to be honest with you, it's really just a group of Black Red Hatters within IT that was just kind of meet in in a lunch room or in a you know or in a conference room to kind of share our different experiences um, that we was having back in 2015. And during this time, Red Hat in general was working on you know, what at, at at that time is called a, a DNI um, framework and trying to implement that. So what wound up happening in when it got when we launched in July of 2017, Mike Kelly was our CIO and uh, um, who is our CIO and he was our executive sponsor then. And so we was able to officially launch as Build at that time. And then of course. Last year, Kent, Kent Pitcher, uh, it was our executive sponsor in um, November 2019. And actually this year, which we haven't updated this slide, we now have a new one, which is Laura Krabs, which is our uh, CFO. And she's now our new executive sponsor um, um, this year. So that was kind of great and glad that she was able to take that on for us. So they kind of give you some, um, you know, background. Our membership, you know, has been growing a little, you know, every year. But to be honest with you, last year when in the U.S., when the George Floyd incident and a lot of back to back incidents happened in in the United States, um, it wound up expanding our membership. It grew probably at least almost I will say almost double in a way, probably not quite double, but pretty close. It was a pretty good uh, number of people that wanted to join it and wanted to participate from that. We can go to the next slide. As you can see here, um, these are just a few of us. This picture has been, oh my gosh, it's a it's an old, older picture. We haven't been in the office now, goodness, over a year now. <laughs> so we haven't been able to get a newer picture updated, but hopefully we'll be able to um, very soon. So um, we can go to the next slide. So just to talk about how we are structured within our um, group. Our goal, as you can see here, is all about fostering and connecting, uh, have a connected community of Black Red Hatters and our allies. We want to support the Red Hat efforts to recruit and develop and engage Black associates so that we can advance uh, within our careers. So we have different committees here. Um, we have the Community Outreach Committee, which is a committee that they kind of work and focus on um, different programs within, sometimes it's more locally, but we do try to broaden that to, to help out even broadly than um, our local area here in Raleigh, North Carolina. But we um, we do a lot of fundraising. We go and help out when people need help with certain, like just volunteers in general. Um, so this group kind of deals with that. Our marketing and communication team is um, the team that kind of deals with all our communications around major programs. We just had our um, what we call our anniversary week. They was a big they was a big help within that. They did a lot of communication, send our emails, and let people know about what's going on. In addition to, they also do um, all our swag um, things. They kind of help out creating all our swag. Just I can't kind of see here, but I think a few of us uh, <laughs> has the um, the red hat T-shirt on. And so they help develop those T-shirts and our logos and things of that sort. The education program is really about, and membership is really developing within the Bill membership itself. 
We want to educate our members, um, whether it's from career type goals all the way up to mental, you know, health type stuff. Uh, we just last year, because of the incidents that happened, we actually brought in someone to help us through those incidents, um, someone to help with our mental capacity of dealing with all the things that was happening. So this group kind of helps with those type of things um, around those type of programs. Then, of course, social and, and membership is all about us trying to say, hey, you know, let's kind of relax. We've been doing a lot of work. Let's get to know each other more like networking and just having some fun, you know, uh, with all the work that we do. And then lastly is the team that I am um, co-lead of and run here, and that's Campus and University Outreach. And we'll talk about more about this committee in a few. And we can just see all the different things that we have, all the different activities we deal with. Um, over the year, but we have a lot of different events each, you know, almost every quarter we have some type of event for the most part. You go to the next slide. So a little bit about uh, community um, university outreach is um, we are about trying to offer professional development, mentorship and partnership with our historical black colleges and universities, which what you'll hear the term called HBCUs when we do outreach and engagement. Um, we try to help out with coding workshops, we do resume prep workshops, career panels, whatever they may need. Um, it just depends on the school that we're working with because we work with different um, HBCUs and whatever their needs may be, um, that's what we do. Uh, one of the big things that we do because we have internship program here at Red Hat, usually every time, you know, every year before that we have a bunch of resume workshops, things to help prep them for to get ready to apply for an internship, that's pretty much what we do. Um, and then the lastly thing that we kind of do, we also go out and do surveys. So then when we do this um, presentation, we always have people fill out surveys, want to find out, you know, what they want from us. And, and then we ask for them to participate. You know, that's the key thing for our group is that we need participation and partnership. Without that, we can't kind of just guess at what people need. We want to really um, give people what they need in, in order to advance their career um, from for the different students. And that, and we do this from not only just college level, we do also start usually around middle school and you know up to college level. And next slide, and I think it's over to you, Maria. Yep, that's me. Hold on, let me uh, slide. Okay, right. So I'm just going to talk a bit about the history of Fedora's DNI and DEI efforts. Um, I don't know what year this happened, but I believe it all began with uh, wanting a diversity and inclusion advisor to the Fedora Council. Uh, Do you know what year that was? I guess it was 2014 or 13 or 14. It was it was when we started the Fedora Council and when we went to, b before the Fedora Council existed, there was a Fedora board and that didn't have any named roles. And as part of the Fedora Council, we wanted to give each position on the council actually a named role and responsibility area. And so when I was thinking about what those roles should be, this was one that was important to have. Definitely. So we had that, uh... Uh, on our council, and it, we still have that today. Vipul is our current diversity and inclusion advisor to the council. Um, so that's kind of how that was our first initial effort. Um, uh, shortly after that, I want to say, um, a group of people came up with an idea to create Fedora Women's Day. Um, there was enough people and excitement and interest in this that a team was formed around this event and making it happen. So that's how the DNI team came to be. Um, Fedora Women's Day was a huge success. It grew and grew, and I think by the last year we we did it in person, I want to say there was over 20 countries holding local Fedora Women's Days. So that was a huge success for our team, and I think that was grown over maybe three to four years of Fedora Women's Day. Um, but there was kind of a problem behind that. So because that we were focused solely on this for our Women's Day, there were other things that didn't get as much attention. Things like um, governance and how the team was going to work, processes, um, ensuring that there was mentorship and sustainability, aka bringing in new contributors to the team. And it was no, it was no one by no one's fault, right? Um, these things kind of. It tend to happen, especially if 
a couple of people are, are very, very passionate and they're just, they're going at it. Um, so, so basically, uh, those folks who were, were organizing for Women's Day eventually began to feel, feel burnout. And there's no, it's not going to be a good event or a, a good initiative if people are feeling burnt out about it. So um, things started to slow down with the group a little bit. Um, and right around that time, I had stepped into the community action and impact coordinator role. And shortly after that, we had COVID. And so we went virtual. So Fedora Women's Day was online in 2020. Meanwhile, we had been talking about, you know, should Fedora Women's Day be Fedora Week of Diversity? You know, um, supporting women was a very logical first step as a team to, to, to kind of have inclusive efforts and initiatives. But as we have evolved and grown as a community and just in general, our knowledge of these topics as a, as a society, we realize, okay, we need to make this even broader. So right now there is a effort to move from Fedora Women's Day to Fedora Week of Diversity, and that will happen for the first time this October. I also organized a team meetup in the spring um, just to bring everyone together. We spent a lot of time just chatting and trying to understand what happened with the team in the past and so that we can move forward in a good way after I kind of identifying some of the issues that I had outlined a little bit earlier. So that is kind of where we're at today. We meet every two weeks. Um, uh, the the attendance is kind of spotty. We are definitely not um, 450 <laughs> with committees, um, but having that amount of people involved in these types of efforts would be awesome. So definitely want to learn from what y'all are doing. Okay. Ron, take it away. All right. And now to the panel discussion. So if you're just joining us, what we started off with was we started off with a brief, brief introduction of the panelists. We shifted from that brief introduction to the of the panelists to talking about some, some of the history of Red Hat, talking about some of the history of BUILD, which stands for Blacks United in Leadership and Diversity. And we also uh, shared some of the history of Fedora. So we've grounded that work. We've hopefully given you some background about the different organizations. And now we would like to jump into some of the panel questions. I would like to say that as we open it up and start this panel discussion, please start to put your questions in the Q&A so we can also uh, use some of those questions to, to continue this panel discussion and have interaction with the audience. So for this first question, I'd like to ask Kimla, tell me about one experience you have had with trying to build sustainable diversity, equity, and inclusion in your organization? So one of the things, you know, that was when we first started with, especially the campus and university outreach was really about trying to reach out because the difference with our committee, committee, we was reaching out outside of Red Hat to HBCUs and other organizations to start trying to figure out what they need and what, you know, and even what Red Hat needed, trying to figure out what kind of partnership we was building. The hard part was in the beginning, we didn't have a lot of people that was part of my committee. And it was hard to sustain that relationship with each one of these schools. And even just us starting locally, we have within the Raleigh um, Durham area, we have about five or six um, HBCU schools in addition to all the other orgs, organizations we were trying to uh, partner with. So one of the things that was hard to do was to keep that relationship um, together and have a consistent you know, you know, relationship with them where we're constantly talking with them on a regular basis. So as I mentioned over this last year we actually got an increase in our membership and also an increase in our committee membership so now one of the things we're doing now to help sustain our committee in particular and this is across with all our committees to be honest with you but definitely i'm speaking more for our committee which is um the campus and university outreach is that now we have a lot more people to help us build that relationship with the different um schools and the different organizations that we're partnering with that's great. That's great. And, and yeah, I like how you you brought in like, you know, the the notion that, you know, at, from the perspective of campus and university outreach, one of the things that I think you're also talking about is turnover. Can you speak a little bit about turnover in, on the campus 
campus side and, and how we deal with that? Yes. Um, so, you know, people, you know, it's one of the things when, you, when you're doing any committee and a membership is that, you know, you're trying to get volunteers and, and from both sides because you have turnover even on HBCU side where you're meeting with a particular person and they, you know, lead. They're just like any other organization. They have turnover on their side. So having that was always a problem. Even having turnover within the, or our organization and having people leave within our committee and, you know, they'll come in and help. So it's, it's really just you constantly having to always figure out, you know, get more volunteers and reaching out to people. And now we kind of have, I kind of understand that most people just want to just do the work and say, okay, here's a workshop I need for you to do. Like this one item, this one event. So that's kind of how we're starting to do when it comes to volunteers when it comes to our part, you know, the turnover on the HBCU side, we just constantly have to reach out. That's why it's, it's good for us to have that continued relationship because if that person is leaving, hopefully because we built that relationship, they'll let us know and they'll listen us to the next person. All right, excellent. Thank you for that. I'd like to turn it over and ask uh, Marie uh, the, the same question. So tell me a, a little bit about your experience with uh, trying to build sustainable DEI in, on, in Fedora. Sure. So um, as I stepped into the role of FCAKE, I was uh, handed over a project um, updating, reviving, modernizing Fedora's code of conduct. So um, this was like a huge effort and it's uh, the code is out. There's still more efforts that are being done for this. Um, and it's something that a lot of people at this point like don't want to be involved in a community if there's not a code of conduct there. So um, people feel safer in our different platforms for chatting and they have an avenue to come and resolve some of the issues or inevitable conflicts that will come up um, because of our differences in who we are. Um, Matthew and I deal with code of conduct reports and. And, you know, there's just a lot of misunderstandings that can come between cultures and genders and et cetera, et cetera. So um, getting the code of conduct in place is a huge, a huge step for Fedora's DEI uh, sustainability. And not only that, we involved the community in it as much as we possibly could and had a lot of rounds of feedback. So we believe that there is a significant amount of buy-in now on it as well. I want to add a comment, maybe, uh, like from the perspective of uh, the less engaged person, uh, I think what the experience I got for my from my involvement in Fedora community from the start was that generally the community is very friendly and you start participating in the community, you don't see that much of a barrier and it's it really helps to engage and start and so on. But I also learned that even though I had no particular goal to become the DEI like uh, representative or person like this, just by being there and being me there, uh, I uh, started to become like a focal point for many of these uh, conversations in the local communities or in the uh, communities uh, in the ambassador group or or further in the in in there. And uh, there was uh, the experience, I would say, is uh, the growth from just uh, making it naturally because it just happens to you and you have to be in, in, uh, in, in these situations anyway, to some understanding that probably this needs to be addressed and needs to be uh, resolved in some broader scope and we, need, we can find each other and work together on resolving this thing. So there is a certain growth once you enter the open source community and start working with it and look into those topics. Thank you for that. We do have two questions in the chat that I think are related to this question. So I do want to pause and and, and shift the agenda slightly so that we make sure we get these in time. Um, Luna asks, is it easier to get a job at Red Hat after school for these students that have already done some of the Rails slash OpenShift courses, et cetera? Uh, Kimla, I don't necessarily know if you want to speak to that or if you would like for me to speak to that. I, I, I do, I, I can go ahead really quickly and say, we really try and partner at, with the people team at Red Hat 
And we actually, uh, part of the programs that we build, as Kimla mentioned in that introduction, we try to do uh, soft skills, resume writing. We also try and bring in our, our Red Hat team, the Red Hat University team to partner with these universities so that when they get to the step of internships, uh, we have also facilitated meetings with managers. And so we do try to make it easier for students to get a job at Red Hat. And that's really the focus and the goal of Bill's campus and university outreach. I don't know if uh, uh, Marie, if you or, or someone would like to discuss that also. Uh, I think in general, um, if you're able to be involved in Fedora or have open source, it's going to be easier to get a job at Red Hat. I would say absolutely yes. But I think that there's also been, I wouldn't say, I don't know if it's a shift, but uh, the messaging about hiring is very much, we are hiring people at all skill levels. And it's more about the human potential versus the, um, you know, having some super, evolved expertise on something. Obviously, we, we need those people too, but um, I think that the hiring practices at Red Hat are, they're looking to become more diverse. Bottom line is though, if you're involved in Fedora, you probably have a step up at uh, uh, applying to Red Hat. Excellent. Um, David Duncan also asked, what are the ways that you think general company policies and guidelines have changed to better support leadership programs like Bill? Uh, Marie mentioned the code of conduct. Are there others? Does anyone want to take that one? I can at least talk about a little bit on our side. Um, for the ones that, you know, that are, are not part of Red Hat, you know, one of the new things that, new things that they did at Red Hat, they created a separate, you know, organization. And now we, like, if you remember the history that I said that we started off just the DNI, that it was like a program they were standing up. Well, as of this year, they actually implemented a whole organization called DEI, which is diversity. They put the equity, the equitable part in there. So now, you know, that is, a. I feel like that's another way of them, you know, Red Hat saying that we're, we're taking this, you know, seriously. And they're trying to look at you know, multiple areas, not just diversity, but making sure everybody getting paid properly and things of that sort, and making sure that people are, are included. Because once you hire, you want the other things you want to feel included. So it's really bringing what open source is, you know, really, and I guess, you know, you know, almost full circle in a way by us standing up this organization. And that's one step towards, you know, the leadership happening, at least from a Red Hat perspective. And of course, we still got room to grow. That's always the case, but that's a step forward. Kimla, this uh, has been brought to our attention in the chat that your audio is a little bit choppy. You may want to refresh or you may want to drop out and come back, come right back in and we'll make sure you get promoted back to moderator. Um, let's let's make sure can you, if you all would, please continue to add your questions to the Q&A. We want to keep this interactive. We also want to try and make it uh, to some, through some of these questions that we have. The next question is leadership. What education and training has your organization participated in? Uh, I would like to kick this to the Fedora team first. I believe, uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, you have something that you'd like to share? Yeah, uh, we have had one training which we recommended to the community. But at the same time, for coming Fedora weeks of Di Week of Diversity, we have been looking at more and more resources on what we can recommend to community on different time structure. If someone wants to spend a couple of hours to week long length course and how we can support that. So that more and people, more and more people can learn about that. The current that the one we have been recommending is this, and we also have a badge for it. Fedora badges is very much loved in Fedora community. People do it. And then they come back to us that I completed the training and we award them a badge. We are also looking forward to have more of those. And I have been working and I have been working with Marie and serve some more folks in the community on a resource base that we are planning to put it before for week of diversity. I think I have it online somewhere. And I, I'll post that in chat. 
uh, it's from my personal note, it's not on docs.fp.org because we need to go through multiple review process, but that resource page is something we are looking forward to and we can guide people to have certain trainings and then look on how we can support it, be it from reimbursements or be trying to organize trainings for all of the people together. Uh, so yeah, we are looking forward to those things. Thank and you, as Lisa, I, I apologize basis. for uh, mispronouncing your name there. Go ahead, Marie. I just wanna add a follow-up question actually, not to Vipul in specific, but everyone. Um, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about as we've been building our trip, organizing for the Fedora Week of Diversity is specific to these trainings is we're concerned that the only people who will show up for these trainings are people who are already very aware of these issues. So how do we, or how does anyone here in the chat on the panel that, you know, kind of incentivize or um, encourage folks and actually get, you know, other people to join in folks that are not like naturally gravitating towards these topics. Go ahead, Matthew. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So one thing, one thing we have done is uh, at, at Nest last year, we had a keynote speech, which was a plenary session. Every, everybody was invited to, which was about diversity and its importance. And we also picked a speaker with a great talk with a Star Trek nerd focus on it to have a, you know some specific appeal to our audience, um, so that people who might have been like, oh, I'll skip that one, might find find a little twist on that. And it was also you know a big focus of our conference. So that's one thing we've done. From my perspective, I think uh, it is important to understand that not all audiences are ready to talk about the diversity and inclusion the way the diversity and inclusion group, group talks about this. And I, I see this a lot in some local communities. And I think one way to address this is like to learn the language and learn the style of your target audience and uh, find a way how to communicate with it in that uh, language or in that style. It doesn't mean you need to like, um, discard your goals of building the diverse community, but you need to understand that like in not, you, you cannot always come to the community with the banner, like let's be diverse, if, uh, diverse and inclusive and everyone will be happy about it. So we need to find more different forms of communication, different ways, how do we engage with people without uh, like really pushing the same uh, kind of uh, communication as we use in, in other audiences. So tailoring the message to the specific audience is important and not being too direct, but maybe becoming more subtle sometimes and more like uh, understanding to the, the target uh, audience to which you are uh, working with. Like Excellent. the Star Trek reference, yeah, <laughs> as, as Matthew mentioned. Excellent. I want to close this one out. I just want to say that Red Hat is a is a is a rich environment for education and training in this space. We have opportunities participated in LinkedIn training. We have uh, sessions that are conducted by our DEI affinity groups, and so there's also training outside of Red Hat that that is posted to memo list and other areas. And so you know, I often take advantage of of the vast amount of resources that we have to, to learn about this perspective and to try and educate myself further on this. Um, there's a lot of great questions in the chat. I do wanna move to the next question because I wanna get uh, Mariana in here to talk a little bit about strategy. And then I'm gonna get, go back to some of the questions in the chat. So uh, Mariana, how are, how are we planning to implement yearly goals to move our DEI strategy forward? How are you going to measure those goals? Talk a little bit about strategy. Um, the closest action from the Fedora perspective towards diversity and inclusion is Fedora Week of Diversity, which just by renaming it and focusing into diversity in general, except uh, only women, uh, I think is a great action to take. Uh, besides that, I would like to mention the outreach participation and other mentorship programs, which help directly the students that work on the program, but also um, help the mentors that mentor the students and um, help them bring closer to people that suffer from diversity uh, issues. Um, another thing that the council did last month 
um, two months ago in June, is that we launched uh, a survey to the community. And a part of that survey aimed to gather some feedback uh, from the Fedora community in terms of how they feel when it comes to participation, how they feel when it comes to joining teams, joining mailing lists, etc., etc. I think the next step towards that is have that data collected, uh, analyze it, and try to build a strategy in the upcoming months or for the upcoming months or even for the upcoming years uh, towards that. And of course, the uh, the documentation that people mentioned earlier, I think this is a very, very important uh, step towards diversity inclusion within the Fedora community into having something in region form besides um, events. Yes, thank you. Um, ben Cotton has a great follow-up question and I think um, someone from the Fedora, Fedora team can talk, speak to. A lot of DEI co uh, companies seem to focus on compensation and career advancement, but those don't necessarily apply directly to open source communities. Um, how can Fedora improve our DEI in similar ways? Everyone now thinks about <laughs> about the question. Yeah, yeah. So, I think I, I think Ben, you stumped us. And in terms of DEI, you can't necessarily solution everything. I think that we would invite you in to to work with the group and work with Fedora and work with Red Hat to to come up with some of the ways that we can change some of this focus from a compensation and from a career perspective, uh, career advancement perspective. I think I think the so, compensation. In, in in the open source community is more of about like uh, giving a credit and making these people visible and valuable by the community. And one way to make certain efforts uh, like compensated in in the open source communities is for it to provide the publicity and the necessary support in in this way for for the effort. And, and like making these people visible. We did some of this like when we, for example, highlighted the testers of Fedora who, who made the Fedora really successful, which has not always happened. And with uh, the EI efforts, we also need to uh, show the people who invested time in it and achieved something. And we need to like, talk mo more about this and bring this um, as a reward to the people who invested time in this. That's one aspect how we can do it. Can I add something here? So from yep. Ben's question, I understand that compensation refers to monetary um, compensation. So when it comes to money within the federal community, I would say that uh, sponsoring contributors into attending big events has been something that really has helped contributor into connecting with one another, but actually um, gaining more experience and knowledge into different topics. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen quite a bit of revolution in, in sponsorship and how that's been used in an open source community, particularly sponsoring people and in, in, in creating open source um, software and GitHub and things like that. Go ahead, I apologize, I interrupted someone. No, no, so mentorship is also something open source communities can do a lot and it can range from participating in outreachy, which requires certain funding to also other programs which does not require a lot of funding and sometimes none and just it requires knowledge transfer kind of things. And Fedora uh, as mentored project committee in Mindshare, I'm also responsible for looking on all the mentorship projects that Fedora wants to participate in. And Marie and I have been looking into more and more programs which does this thing, to mentor more people who may not have the same uh, options and opportunities so that's something uh, open source communities can do and not just outreach, but even more. All right, excellent. I wanna bring Kimla back in here to talk a little bit about strategy and, and then we'll try and move on to some of the questions and uh, some of the next slides that we have. I know, okay, now, can you guys hear me okay now? Cause I don't wanna talk at this. <laughs> okay, cool, all right. So um, one of the things are, I guess around our strategy that you know that we changed up a little bit this year, I mean, we always kind of had yearly goals it kind of came down to whether we had enough volunteers to kind of implement some of the workshops and things that we had um, put in place for those yearly goals. So this year we actually did that. And also we're making sure 
we kind of have a strategy now of knowing what workshops over the years we started learning, okay, in the fall, we want to prepare our students for the internship program that's coming up there that usually we start um, that the people team at Red Hat, you know, sends out those um, job uh, requ uh, requests, you know, around October timeframe. So we try to make sure we have workshops in place, you know, during those times. So we focus on making sure we have enough events and workshops where we're preparing our students and then by doing that we measure a lot of those goals by seeing how you know whether we're advertising good enough by looking at how many people actually attend and then the people also look at how many people actually even apply from an internship as much as we can we don't know directly because one of the things about when you get the when you start coming in house is that those numbers doesn't always can be seen by us because of privacy issues and things of that sort but we can somewhat see they the people team are able to tell us whether that person came with attended some of our events or not so that's one way of us trying to measure you know give you one strategy that we use for um, measuring those type of goals there's other goals that we do but i just wanted i just kept trying to keep my question short that's the one i'll focus on you know the most Absolutely. We want to, um, uh, yes, we want to continue on to the next question and try and get some more audience in, engagement. So the next one is actually focused on engagement. So how will we continue to engage with our DEI community on a regular basis? And what is the best form of communication to keep our diversity and equity and inclusion community informed and aware? So um, I'm not sure who wants to, to take this one first. I'll, I'll toss it to the entire panel. I can kind of go first, at least kind of tell you guys what we kind of do. We have to do multiple avenues. What I have learned <laughs> and continue to learn as uh, as now that we have interns coming in, we actually even ask them, like, how can we reach you, especially from the student side of things? You know, it's like they have a I'm going to be honest, I've been, you know, in out of, away from college year, you know, like for a long time. So and I feel like, you know, my age and just how, you know, students communicate now is a lot different than how I was back in my day. So um, so it was it's more about, you know, everybody's talking about their influence. Right. So what I learned this year from my interns is that sometimes we have to leverage the students that was part of our internships that kind of help us communicate some of this continuing engagement with some of our schools. Um, that's one avenue we're going to look into this year. Other than that, we also send out surveys to the students that sign up. So when people sign up for our different events, we ask them, do they want to continue to um, receive information from us? So we do send emails out too. But, you know, sometimes people see those emails and sometimes they don't. And then the other one is coached by social media. And we, you know, try to post things on our different, you know, social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram. It's probably the two that I mostly kind of focus on. So I, can, I can talk a little bit about um, FWD. So uh, as I mentioned, we're moving to the Fedora Week of Diversity. And um, this is a yearly event that's evolved from Fedora Women's Day. So we do plan to continue um, running that event yearly. Uh, I'm not sure how it'll look if we're, we're going back to in person, but um, it's been great to have people all together. So definitely engaging in that way. Um, also, you know, we meet regularly. Um, as I mentioned, though, we do have a small team. So there's less resources to do all those types of promotions and talking with uh, every, you know, network and avenue that we have. So in some ways, we have to, you know, rely on our, uh, the, the contribution circle, like right around the team as well, right? So Mindshare Committee and some of the other, uh, the community blog and, and, and things of that nature. I want maybe to, to add to this, uh, as, as we discussed in the previous question, but uh, sometimes we, we need a local kind of understanding of this topic. So it works for the local environment, for the local community. So maybe worth mentioning that uh, if you want to participate, it doesn't mean that there are like set of rules written in stone, which is how DNI efforts should be done. And you should just uh, learn how to do it and copy. Speed. But you can have your, your own ideas and the way to like engage with the AI communities. Uh, uh, really, uh, maybe you you do something first and then tell us <laughs> what have you done and how it worked. It also works, right? So so try to 
uh, I, I think it's important to like not just follow the uh, uh, rules or ideas which are provided to uh, the the AI community, but also like uh, maybe find something like this in your current work in your current environment and then just share the experience with uh, the rest of, of us uh, to know how this uh, this works and, and, and so on so this community engagement means uh, we just need to learn about each other and <laughs> and to share the experience this and to communicate on on these topics that's uh, how I would see it also Thank you for that. I want to do a quick time check. I think uh, I'm at 10.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Are we going to 10.50 or till 11? We can go right up till 11 or a few minutes before. Some of us might have sessions right after this. So. Okay, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, the next question that I see in the chat, I do see there, there have been quite a few questions asked. I think Anatoly asked, are there any quantitative metrics for DEI? Is a dashboard possible? And I want to just jump in and take this. Uh, Kimla and I participated in an open source uh, certificate technology um, certificate, and we got this opportunity through Brandy Ice. It was an opportunity offered to select people at Red Hat, and we learned quite a bit about the open source community. We learned quite a bit about learning the metrics that you can use to measure success uh, within open source communities and there was actually a suite of metrics that were designed to measure open source community, designed to measure participation and engagement. And there were some quantitative measurements about measuring diversity of your board, measuring diversity of your events and things like that. So if you were to take kind of all of those metrics, I think you could potentially build a dashboard, but I think you potentially, you know, as others have said, you really want to in define those metrics based on your community and also consider um, some local variation if you are to engage in that. I don't know if there are other people that want to respond to that as well. I'll respond to that one. Um, so this is a, a topic that we've talked about many, many times. Um, we would love to have some more data about Fedora's DEI. The unfortunate truth around that is that it involves a lot of personally identifying information. And that takes legal resources to handle that Fedora as a community uh, doesn't necessarily have. We do have some legal resources, but not that many. Whereas, you know, Red Hat has, you know, they're surveying maybe their own, um, their own employees or you know, you're, you're having students opt into something that's going to advance their career. In Fedora, people are very privacy minded. So gathering these types of pieces of information is problematic on several different axes. Um, so we kind of have to focus on other things like Mariana was talking about, like, are people comfortable to speak up in channels, right? Are people comfortable emailing or mailing lists, um, that sort of thing. I think if our resources in that department grew or Red Hat became invested in understanding that uh, data, then maybe we can move forward with, you know, doing surveys that are quite that specific. But a problem with that is because we have such unique contributors if we find you know we even if it's anonymous if there's someone who's in italy who's uh, identifies as gay and there's only one gay contributor in italy then now we know like who that person is so it becomes problematic on a couple different levels even for the people who would be looking at the data so just a little note on that side from fedora All right, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, the next question was from Daniel. He asked, uh, in, in a remote work and distributed community like Fedora, it's impossible to look around the office and get an idea of how diverse it might be. So how do you really think about remote diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts? Well, I think 
just the point that I was making just to go off of that, right? We have the survey where we're really looking to folks sentiment around like inclusion and comfortability and accessibility to our resources, our people, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we're looking at um, what, you know, looking forward to next year's results. On a separate note, I will say that I have a feeling in my soul <laughs> that we have increased our DEI effort, DEI efforts simply by being virtual, right? So I, you probably, if you've been around the sessions, um, to, you know, we've been talking a lot about like registrations and our goal there, right? Um, and we've just seen like increasing numbers at all of our events. And I think that just means that we're reaching more people, right? The people who are, um, weren't previously able to travel to conferences. So we are reaching uh, people who are stay-at-home moms or need to take care of their family members over the weekends or have pets or simply folks who are neurodivergent and would not be comfortable in a, a conference environment. So I think that we can say that um, Virtual, going virtual, the silver lining is the accessibility that we've seen for folks who were previously not able to reach this content. So moving forward, hybrid is going to be what we do once in-person events happen. Um, and what that looks like is still up in the air. Excellent. I see one more question in the chat, and I do think we have one more question in the slot, so I, I think we will have enough time to cover both. The focus is on leadership, obviously, from David. How do we extend this to outside of the technology we are used to at Red Hat, et cetera? And so um, I think the question there is, um, you know, many of the the efforts in diversity, equity, and inclusion is trying to call people into leadership. But, you know, what about areas outside of technology? I mean, a lot of times we focus on kind of engineering and products and things like that, but we don't necessarily focus. And again, David, I, I would love for you to clarify if I'm misinterpreting your question, but we don't often focus on like maybe leadership in marketing or leadership in the the people team or other areas that are not technology focused. And and I can say that we, you know, one of the things, at least within Build, I definitely try to make sure I don't focus completely on technology because I'm not a developer, I'm not an engineer. So I also try to mix it up and and partner with other people within Red Hat. Uh, we did have a lot of different organizations within Red Hat that reached out to Bill as for helping to increase their diversity numbers. And so it's definitely, we definitely do that. And actually, I can actually tell you, even within the internship, it is a number of people um, that, that came from not, they weren't just technology. They was mostly, they was across the board. We had people from not from the people team that was part, you know, that was interning. We had people from you know the marketing team we had a multiple facet on that where we don't focus on both um i know that one of the things we're doing like i said we talked about soft skills and that's mostly that you're going to need across the board so we do try to make sure we focus on all areas as much as we can um you know but like i said if it's really want to get targeted on a particular organization say such as marketing what they're trying to do then you can you can create workshops surrounding that to make sure you get the right type of um you know, the right, you know, skill set for the, to hire those people in marketing area. Hopefully we kind of answer your question on that. All right, awesome. So I think we can move to the last question and maybe wrap this up. We appreciate the participation. What future plans does your organization organization have to continue this work? Participation in more mentorship program that has a focus on this is one. As I mentioned, Fedora Week of Diversity, and actually I'll just 
plug the session right after this. Uh, we're doing a Tell Your Fedora Story Fedora Week of Diversity session. Um, so that that we're really excited about to see what we can do for the first time around with it. And we hope to engage our community with that. Yeah, I'd like to put a quick plug in some uh, in for some of the work that we're doing in campus and university outreach. Um, some of our future plans are we would like to build a series of workshops that are focused on professional careers. And we would like to take these this series of workshops uh, to different HBCUs to introduce them to things like engineering, marketing, to, to, to being an architect, to, to whatever opportunities there are at Red Hat. Also trying to support that by also introducing them to our certification process in Red Hat Academy. So, um, yeah. I think you is, might have- Yeah, is my audio bad, bad or, or- No, it was, it was my connection and I, I missed the last thing that you said and I came back, everyone was silent. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> but you I think you're probably internet. wrapping up. <laughs> okay. No, I, no. I think we're doing good. I think we're just wrapping up here. I really want to appreciate everyone's participation. Definitely. If you have questions, this is a community effort and we appreciate your thoughtful questions. We appreciate your thoughtful feedback. I think we all are maybe in agreement that this is the first step in, in a very long journey. So we would like to invite you all in to participate in this and, and, and help us grow as a community. Thank you so much for your participation and take care. And thank you so much, Kimla and Ron, for coming here. We're really glad to have you in the Fedora community here with us. Yes, thanks everybody and the other panelists as well.